Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. This is the four hour chart of ClarkMoody.com. This is the feed from Mt. Gox. And you can see that the Bitcoin is trading about 95. Now, the predicted sell off that I saw based on the breakdown and the MACD, and especially the fundamentals and technicals, uh, happened. I received a lot of PMs and messages, people saying that I crashed the Bitcoin market. Uh, I should be so lucky to have such influence. I think that I probably saw something a lot of other people saw. But nevertheless, uh, we're looking for a retest of that low, possibly at 50. Now, the reason why I made that call was the disparity uh, on the bid and ask as far as the market depth so let's go down and look at the market depth and uh, we can see that uh, the number of bitcoins on the exchange is about 170 now it's very interesting I watched this just a little while ago and uh, that number was actually down to 164 so this is a very very important number to keep an eye on because this is the number of bitcoins that are offered for sale on the exchange. Now, this is the number of uh, offers that are actually placed on the exchange. Now, that doesn't mean that that's the number of bitcoins on the exchange. There could be a much larger number of bitcoins on the exchange that simply aren't offered to be sold uh, at a particular price. So it's quite possible that the number could be double or triple this number. We just don't know. We just know that this number is the number of active offers that have a specific price set for them. And my basis for my call was the large number of Bitcoins for sale. And uh, this is going to be impacted by the story that we're going to be looking at. And that is the big story about Mt. Gox and CoinLab and this uh, alleged lawsuit. I say alleged lawsuit because uh, it, it apparently has been filed, but uh, it's still a little bit up in the air. So uh, I have a copy of the alleged lawsuit or an alleged copy of the alleged lawsuit. I'm going to get into that. We're going to get into the story, but uh, before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the potential impact on the price. Now, one of the things alleged in this is that uh, Mt. Gox failed to turn over the passwords, the YubiKeys, the accounts uh, to CoinLab, and uh, that could have a big impact on this number of coins that are on the exchange. Now, if you, like I have, uh, have a Mt. Gox account, you know that uh, it's a fairly long ordeal to get your bank account linked up to be able to wire money to the uh, Japanese bank that manages the funds for Mt. Gox. So to get money over to Mt. Gox, you have to wire money through your bank to a Japanese bank. Now the idea was apparently for CoinLab to use its relationship with U.S. banks to uh, make that sort of thing easier. So it's not the case that uh, there hasn't been the ability to transfer money from U.S. and Canada to Mt. Gox. That's always been the case. It's just that it has to go through a Japanese bank. Now the big question for the people who are worried about whether their coins are going to be safe or not is uh, this transfer of uh, all these usernames and passwords. So I want to keep a very close eye on this number because this is going to be a very key number to watch as far as the trust in whether bitcoins can be left on the exchange. You know, as I just said, the difficulty of getting money onto the exchange, there are a lot of hoops to jump through. But getting bitcoins off of an exchange is a incredibly simple process. You just simply click on withdraw funds, you choose Bitcoin, you put in a Bitcoin address, 
and you send your bitcoins off the exchange so it's very very easy to remove your bitcoins from an exchange it's not so easy to get dollars onto an exchange so that's going to be the big thing the big factor that we want to watch to see and uh, if this is going to have an impact on the price of bitcoin now you can see we're rallying up to that moving average crossover one of the reasons why I called for a downdraft in the price we're just touching up to that point and seem to be turning down uh, whether or not we're gonna get a break out through this or we will turn down and this moving average will continue down we'll have to wait and see on that so let's get over to that important article well one of the important articles on it this is the one from QZ.com there are a lot of people covering this story. $75 million lawsuit could destroy Bitcoin's largest exchange, but might help the currency go mainstream. That's by Christopher Mims. CoinLab, one of the best funded Bitcoin startups in the U.S., is suing Mt. Gox, the world's largest exchange for Bitcoin, for $75 million. According to estimates, that's several times more than Mt. Gox's entire annual revenue, which The Verge pegs at about $22 million a year. My own calculations based on periodic reports issued by Mt. Gox itself suggest that this is a reasonable estimate. Bitcoin, in case you haven't been following it, and we'll skip that part. Considering that Mt. Gox, which is based in Tokyo, Japan, currently handles 66% of all exchanges of Bitcoin for more conventional currencies, a court finding in favor of CoinLab would probably shut down the primary venue for turning Bitcoin into hard currency, or vice versa, turning hard currency into Bitcoin. That's not necessarily a bad thing. CoinLab CEO and founder Peter Vessins issued an impassioned personal letter to accompany the lawsuit in which he wrote, Bitcoiners have on average lost more money due to tech technology difficulties, frozen lost banking relationships, and shady characters than due to any part of Bitcoin's fundamental economics. I hate this fact passionately. Those technological difficulties probably include the multiple shutdowns of Mt. Gox that have occurred over the past year, whether due to overwhelming demand or attacks by hackers. One of the original motivations for the partnership between CoinLab and Mt. Gox was to add two things to the Mt. Gox system. The first was to give people in North America, where CoinLab was to be the exclusive partner of Mt. Gox, the ability to easily transfer hard currency into and out of the exchange. So this is going to be the thing we're going to center on here. We're going to talk about this when we look at the contract and look at consideration. This is going to be the key part here of consideration on the side of CoinLab. The second reason for the partnership was that CoinLab hoped to leverage its considerable technical expertise and computing platform to handle some aspects of Bitcoin exchange in North America in a way that would make Mt. Gox trading system more stable overall. What went wrong? The complaint filed by CoinLab against Mt. Gox is illuminating first there's the apparent speed with which CoinLab opted for a legal remedy. The two companies announced their partnership fewer than three months ago on February 28th, but the complaint reveals that the agreement between them was actually signed on November 22nd, 2012. Mt. Gox then had four months until March 22nd to transition all U.S. and Canadian customers onto Mt. Gox, uh, of Mt. Gox onto CoinLab systems. CoinLab claims that Mt. Gox breached their agreement in a number of ways, which ultimately led to a loss of customers who were part of an alpha test and were relying on CoinLab to get up and running a U.S.-based outlet for accessing the Mt. Gox system. Transferring money to and from Japanese banks, a current requirement of Mt. Gox is expensive and time-consuming, and this was the primary issue CoinLab was supposed to solve initially. Briefly, here are the ways CoinLab says Mt. Gox breached their agreement. Mt. Gox has failed to cooperate in facilitating the timely and seamless transfer of CoinLab customers to CoinLab since the agreement took effect. Despite repeated requests to do so, Mt. Gox has failed to deliver all passwords, YubiKeys, administrative logins, and any other security information required so that CoinLab may assume 
operation of the Bitcoin exchange services for customers in the United States and Canada in case of a service interruption. Mt. Gox has failed to timely deposit liquidity funds in the manner instructed by CoinLab. Despite repeated requests to do so, Mt. Gox has failed to make available CoinLab on-demand and read-only access to Mt. Gox's databases and other related records and data pertaining to any and all accounts for customers in the United States and Canada. Defendants have breached their promise to provide necessary technology, software, and know-how to CoinLab and have refused or failed to establish promised connections from CoinLab's computer networks to Mt. Gox, Mt. Gox's computer network. So this, this last one here, and we'll stop reading there and go to the contract, but this last one here kind of hints at uh, what we've seen here. It really seems to be very one-sided. It seems like Mt. Gox is promising a whole lot, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what CoinLab has promised. So before we do that, let's take a look at consideration. Now, for those of you who haven't spent some years in law school as I have, uh, it, when you take contract law, uh, you learn the first day that the most important concept in contracts is consideration. Now, anybody can write a contract with anybody else. Uh, just because you write a contract doesn't mean that it is a legally enforceable contract. And one of the absolute bedrock requirements of a legally enforceable contract is consideration. Consideration is a concept of legal value in connection with contracts. It is anything of value promised to another when making a contract. It can take the form of money, physical objects, services, promised actions, abstinence from a future action, that's going to be key here, and much more. Consideration to create a legally enforceable contract entails a detriment to the promisee or a benefit to the promisor. Under the notion of pre-existing rules, if either the promisor or the promisee already had a legal obligation to render such payment, it cannot be seen as consideration in a legal sense. So that's very, very important. Most issues in contract law stand or fall initially on this issue of consideration. So let's jump over to this alleged contract. Now I say alleged contract because uh, I don't know if this is a real contract or not. I'm going to assume this is. But uh, when we read through this contract, what's very interesting about this contract is that we see a tremendous amount of consideration on the part of Mt. Gox. Uh, we see all the obligations that Mt. Gox is obligated to follow. And uh, it's very, very sparse as far as the consideration that CoinLab is offering and uh, my assumption is that CoinLab is agreeing to not do something uh, and uh, also provide their connection to US banks. Uh, F2 says during a period of two years from the start of the term CoinLab shall not directly or indirectly including through legal entities ultimately owned by the same person provide services similar to the services on any website during said two years CoinLab may provide the services to the CoinLab customers only on the Mt. Gox website or CoinLab website so that is what I found to be the primary consideration that CoinLab has offered the question is, is uh, what is the value of that consideration is that consideration enough to establish a legal contract now the other thing I wanted to look at here is the clause, uh, the breach clause. Uh, we've got uh, section J, breach of exclusivity. The parties agree that any breach of section F shall be considered a material breach of this agreement and the liquidated damages, section K. Both parties hereby agree that it may be impossible to determine the monetary harm suffered by the non-breaching party in the event that Mt. Gox breaches section F1 or in the event that CoinLabs breaches section F2 and that therefore after careful consideration the parties agree that reasonable damages for such breach shall be 50 million US dollars. An amount the parties agree is reasonable and fair given the nature of the agreement. 
Now that's very, very interesting that there is a damage, liquidated damage agreement within the contract itself. That gives one pause. But the main thing we want to take out of this is that the liquidated damages clause only comes into play if Mt. Gox breaches section F1. So let's look at section F1 of the contract. Section F1 states, during the term, Mt. Gox and Tybane shall not grant anyone the right to use licensed materials to provide the services or any part thereof in the territory. The exclusivity granted herein shall apply strictly to services targeting the territory and the coin lab customers as defined below and advertised and sold as such. It shall not include the provision of services to users of the services who, depending on the interpretation or circumstances may or may not be considered coin lab customers. So it appears that the breach that Mt. Gox is accused of is continuing to do business with US customers after the dates set. Uh, will a court find that to be the case? I don't know. Uh, so let's go down to the other side of the breach and that's going to be Coin Lab's breach of Section F2. And Section F2 is during a period of two years from the start of the term, Coin Lab shall not directly or indirectly, including through legal entities ultimately owned by the same person, provide services similar to the services on any website. During said two years, Coin Lab may provide the services to the Coin Lab customers only on the Mt. Gox website or on a Coin Lab website. So this is going to be the sticking point for me. Now, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm certainly not a judge, so I'm just guessing at these things. But just from my gut uh, reading of this thing, I am seeing a serious lack of consideration on CoinLab's part. Uh, this contract, to me, appears to be a whole lot of giving by Mt. Gox and a whole lot of getting by CoinLab. And uh, my initial guess, and again, uh, I don't know, but my initial guess is that uh, there is a lack of consideration on the side of CoinLab. So let's get back to the Bitcoin market. Uh, we'll get up to the nearby and uh, we can see that uh, we are uh, falling off of that rally. And uh, we'll take one last look at the market depth. And now we've got more coins coming on the exchange. We're going to keep a very close eye on this. And uh, we're also going to keep a very close eye on this uh, Mt. Gox CoinLab lawsuit. And we'll talk to you next time.